Joining us is Dr. Dwayne Elmore, Associate Professor of Natural Resource Ecology and Management. Well, Dwayne, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Thanks for having me. I was really surprised out, uh, when we were talking earlier to find out this is uh, the time of year when we have some really severe wildfires. I always thought yeah. the summer was the time. Yeah, this is, um, you know, going, coming in out of the winter into the spring, we have a lot of fuels from oak uh, litter and also a lot of the grasses are dried out. They're dormant. They're not uh, actively growing right now. And starting in about January through the first part of April, we have really low relative humidity, mm -hmm. very little moisture in the air. And March is our windiest month. So you've got high fuels that are very dry, a very dry atmosphere typically, uh, and, and, and lots of wind. So those are really good conditions to have large wildfires. Yeah, I can imagine if a fire were lit today, it would just carry yeah, so quickly with all this wind. Absolutely. Well, there's a few things that very simple maintenance techniques we can use around our landscape to protect the home and reduce the risk of fire affecting us uh, immediately at our house. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you inviting us out to share a few of these today. Sure. Well, we're kind of in a, in a danger zone here. We're on the southern side of a city, mm -hmm. um, which is typically in the, in the spring, you're going to have a lot of south winds. So a lot of the wildfires are going to come from the south. Okay. And we're on the edge of the city where if, if there is a large fire coming in, kind of the first line of defense here and a wood home with a lot of leaf litter and a lot of wood structure so there's a lot of flammable material so yeah it's definitely there's some things that you can do to try to lower your fire risk okay well let's look at some of those um, maintenance to reduce that risk sure. Uh, one of the things, we have a wood house, we also have a wood fence. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the things we could do there. Well, one problem here is there's a lot of uh, leaf litter that has blown near or up against this fence mm -hmm. in the fall and the winter. So um, if you had a, uh, a ground fire coming across this leaf litter, um, it could easily ignite the fence which is connected to the house. So a couple things you want to do is to try to separate that flammable fuel from your structures. Right. The simplest is just to get that leaf litter back off, create uh, a meter or more uh, bare ground area, just mm -hmm. rake it out of the way. And of course, you know, with the winds, a lot of it will just blow back. So it's really good to try to remove some of that. Yeah, get and, it off and, site. You know, mm -hmm. compost it, mulch it, right. do something useful with it, but get it away from that structure. Also on the actual fence itself, mm -hmm. where we've got wood to wood contact, and actually this fence also contacts the home, which is wood. Uh, it's really good to try to break this up. So we could put some metal flashing here, maybe remove this board and have a metal barrier. Mm -hmm. Or if, you know, if you're not trying to confine a dog, maybe you can just take this wood off so that there's a gap. Leave a little bit of a gap. Anything mm -hmm. to slow down uh, the, the, the fire spread or to remove the connectivity altogether if you can. But simple metal flashing can do a lot to just slow that rate of spread. Right. Now another area where the leaves collect, I'm sure, is right up here under mm -hmm. your deck. Right, yeah. yeah. So on this home, they're not getting a lot of, of uh, leaf up into that uh, mm -hmm. un underneath the fence, but if it was a, a southerly exposure or a northerly exposure, it's going to because you're, you're going to get a lot of airflow. Right. So you, over the course of the fall and winter, you could get a tremendous amount of leaf litter under that uh, structure. And if you did, again, have a fire that carried across this yard, if it ever got under that, it would be very, very difficult to control with water because right. it's just going to sit there and smolder and, and simmer for a long time and if it ever ignited the deck um, it'd be tough to contain it. Mm -hmm. So we could maybe just put some lattice, lattice and a screen yeah. to keep those leaves out. Whatever mm -hmm. looks attractive to you. You know there's a lot of low-cost alternatives that you could do. Um, you know even just wire fence, chicken wire, anything just to keep most of that leaf litter mm -hmm. from going under. Okay. Yeah. Now what about the trees that are close to the house? I can mm -hmm. see you have some fresh cuts on your tree. Prune yeah. it back a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it depends on the fuel type. If we're talking about eastern red cedar, uh, you don't want those anywhere near the home because that plant has a lot of volatile uh, compounds that put out a tremendous amount of heat mm -hmm. if it's ignited. Oak is not as risky. Um, it takes a lot for oaks to ignite, but under certain conditions they can. So uh, what we've done on this home is not just remove the oak from the whole yard, but we've just trimmed it back so that the, the branches aren't overhanging the house. Right. There's, there's no leaves that are in close proximity, given you know, a three or four meter buffer between the leaves and the structure. 
And only under very extreme fire behavior days would you have the oak's crown out. But just in case, we've taken some precautions to trim that back. Mm -hmm. But there were cedars in this uh, lawn uh, when the house was purchased, and they were just eliminated. Removed immediately. Uh, just too high of a fire risk mm -hmm. in this neighborhood. Okay. One more thing on the house itself, um, you've removed the risk of a fire moving from the trees to there, but yeah. an ember might come in and you've Absolutely. protected the gutters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing is mm -hmm. I would not, in Oklahoma, being a very fire prone landscape, I would not recommend flammable shingles like wood shingles right. that are used mm -hmm. a lot in the Northeast. Uh, it's not a good idea here. So use non-flammable shingles and then on your gutters, uh, install the uh, uh, some type of wire uh, mesh right. guard that will keep leaf litter out of the gutters. Now that's good just from a simple um, maintenance standpoint of, of yeah. you know getting water flow, but it also right. protects in case an ember gets into those gutters into that leaf litter. All right. Well, Dwayne, I really appreciate you sharing these tips with us, and uh, hopefully we can all protect our homes a little bit better. Hope so.